what's going on youtube today we're going to talk about endpoint monitoring endpoint security and monitoring and it's pretty interesting subject to talk about especially that blue teamers if you're getting into blue team you have to demonstrate understanding of this subject endpoint security and monitoring and later it's actually endpoint detection and response so as a blue teamer you have to demonstrate deep understanding of these subjects so first let's let's talk about that so the concept what's the concept behind endpoint security and monitoring the concept behind that is when a malicious activity takes place say malware malware infection war virus infection when that happens on an endpoint whether it be the windows Ma mac or linux you have to you have to investigate why it happened uncover the root cause of the malicious activity and find a way to um, build better defensive tools or better defensive controls to prevent that from happening again so how are you going to do that we're going to we need to actually correlate and study the events post compromise so after the compromise took place we said that we need to investigate the logs the events understand how all of this happened so that's the concept behind endpoint detection and response okay now let's talk about the fundamentals what do we need to understand in order to get into endpoint security and monitoring or to be able to defend endpoints detect incidents and respond to them so first we have to understand how OSs work that's the first thing so you have Windows you have Linux and you have Mac there are specific critical aspects of each of these operating systems where we need to demonstrate deep understanding. The first aspect is the network and the process monitoring. So basically, we have to be able to understand what each process is supposed to do on the operating system. For example, let's take an example in Windows operating system. We have um, the system process right and we have win logon responsible for logging you on you have explorer so we have to understand the function of each of these processes and we need to be able to differentiate the difference between the system processes and the processes that are invoked by the programs the applications and the services so that's a very important aspect to understand the differentiation between system processes and application or program processes why because normally when a malicious activity takes place the processes that are invoked are different from system processes unless it is a rootkit sometimes rootkit injects itself in the system processes and that's too advanced to talk about now first we have to differentiate again between system and application or program processes now again we have to understand the network connections and how each process is initiating network connections whether it is actually listening or if it is actually establishing connection so this applies to system and application processes so to be able to do that we have tools to achieve this so the first tool that you can rely on to have a look on the running processes you know that right it is the task manager so the task manager is the built-in tool in Windows that you can use to take a look and investigate the running processes and the corresponding CPU, memory, and disk usage. Now that's in Windows. What about Linux? In Linux we have the PS. PS, AUX, this command will display the running processes in Linux. You can do the same with Mac as well from the command line. Now, what about network auditing? We want to audit the current network connections, whether they, whether the, what are the corresponding processes, whether these processes are actually listening or have or have established connections. We want to investigate the remote IP, the remote port. How do we do that? 
so basically again in windows we can do that using a tool called tcp view tcp view is a very prominent tool that gives you or displays the running processes it gives you the process okay the protocol and ip port information and it tells you again whether the connection is established or listening another tool is actually netstat netstat can be used both for windows and linux so we need to master using these tools to be able to investigate network and process activity investigating the network and the process activity is a preliminary part in endpoint detection and response and of course monitoring now the third concept is correlation and baselining so what does that mean now correlation and baselining first let's talk about correlation so correlation here identifies the significant relationships from multiple log sources an example would be say we are investigating a compromised machine so from this compromised machine we pulled up sysmon logs okay we pulled up application logs we pulled web server logs server logs and again we pulled firewall logs so when we say correlation we are actually combining the relationships or identifying the relationships between these logs so it's actually making or finding the cross link between these logs so normally what what we do here an example would be um, dealing with sig significant artifacts that coexist from different log sources right so we want to connect these artifacts for example a network connection may or can network connection here let's say we have network network logs so say we have a network connection may exist here in various sources at the same time for, so that connection say is uncovered by sysmon logs and it gave us the event id the event id is three in case of network connection and if you are investigating network connections we look at network logs sysmon logs we use event id 3 and again we look at the firewall logs we extract the ip and port information right at the same time we look at the server logs we take a look at the http requests that have been served and also we take a look at the application logs. what kind of applications that were invoked in that process that's how that's how we actually correlate logs correlate relationships between different logs the objective is to draw a story of what happened that's why we correlate logs now baselining so the baselining is actually a process of knowing what's expected to be normal the baseline of uh, the current network is what is actually what's considered to be normal activity in the network what are the expected um, uh, HTTP requests and responses what are the expected traffic what are the expected protocols the size of the packets all of that is called baselining so baselining is useful in security monitoring because when uh, a malicious activity happens the baseline that we drew st starts to change and that's how we know that there is um, a security incident okay now let's like let's look about the endpoint logging and monitoring so there are certain tools that we can use to monitor an endpoint for example we have the windows event viewer windows event viewer is based on xml or we can actually view the events on xml and it gives you all of the events that took place on the endpoint sysmon sysmon is same as windows event uh, viewer but actually with more control and granular view of the events you can there is in sysmon we have 27 event ids and the corresponding description of each event id we can use these to investigate the logs and what happened always query always query is developed by facebook and it is a tool that you can use guys to investigate 
the events on the operating system using, of course, the SQL language. We talked about that in previous videos. These are tools that we can use to investigate the logs, right, and the events after the initial compromise. So we gather the logs, we gather them, and we, we investigate using these tools. Sysmon, always query, Windows Event Viewer. Of course, there are multiple other tools for other operating systems. Now, let's talk about the endpoint detection and response. The first tool is Wazoo. So Wazoo is considered as endpoint detection and response. It operates as agent and server or agent and manager let's say so the from the manager you monitor all of the endpoints and the agents you deploy them on the endpoints so it's, uh, they send information about the activity of the endpoint to the manager so what they do actually with wazoo you can audit the device or the endpoint for vulnerabilities you can scan for vulnerabilities you can uh, define baseline activities you can monitor for common attacks like unauthorized logins brute force attacks privilege escalations and you can view all of that in or using data visualization visualization tools on the wazoo so it is endpoint detection and response tools the same with microsoft defender and bit defender so bit defender can also be deployed same as wazoo you can install it on a central server and have agents deployed and installed on the endpoints using these tools you can audit for vulnerabilities you can audit for malicious activities at the same time you can uh, use their built-in firewalls to enforce certain rules on the endpoints so having having done all of that let's take a small challenge okay and demonstrate the process of endpoint detection and response so we have this room and there is a small challenge let's take click on view site okay so here what do we have in here there is an endpoint that has been compromised as you can see so we will start the investigation now there is a small note guys which is very important one in the process of incident response so basically before you jump on investigating a machine that is compromised you have to take a full dump of the disk and memory to actually preserve the integrity of the evidence this is also an important part in the computer forensic field the aim is to maintain the integrity of the evidence and not to break the chain of custody so before live investigation before doing live investigation make sure to take memory and disk dump of the full system it's preferred if you do the investigation on the uh the cloned version of the os right it's better to actually do that on the cloned version because you don't want to mess up any evidence in here anyway let's say you have cloned the operating system and you deploy that on the virtual machine now you start the investigation so what do we do you start first with the running processes so here as you can see this is um, a simulated view of the task manager and you have the running processes our job here is to identify and distinguish differentiate between the system processes and the application processes again i told you before guys that rootkits may inject itself in the system processes that's too advanced to discuss now let's take a look here so if explorer which is a system process when log on the service host beacon beacon is not system process all the other processes are system related so that leaves us with one process to investigate which is the beacon we click on that and it happens to be a malicious process what do you do you have to investigate the network connections that this process that this process may have initiated so we look at the network connections usually we use the cp view or we use process hacker and here we have as you can see we have the beacon is initiating or has initiated connection to the remote address here this ip address and on the remote port 400 or 4444 most likely this is metasploit server we click on that this is the process we are going to continue investigation 
And as you can see here, after we discovered that it is malicious, it's time now to develop a response. One of the ways to develop a response is to block the IP address. As you can see, this is the IP address that the process is connecting to. We call that the command uh, or the C2 server. So we take that IP address and we put it on the firewall or we create a rule in the firewall to block the, this IP address and the corresponding port if that's possible. So that's the IP, we copy that and we paste it. This is a simulation of the process of creating a firewall rule to block the IP address. We click on that and as you can see, we have all these machines that are infected with with this uh, virus. How to do that? Actually, we investigate the firewall logs. We see this IP address, where it happens to exist. And we found it happens to exist on these machines or it happens to actually has a presence on these machines as an IP to which the, these machines connected to. So these machines are highlighted for remediation. The remediation process is a process of eradicating the threat, usually by restoring the machine to the latest safest backup working backup or by using if you, the machine is the machine is not important like a honeypot you would just format the machine remediate and that's it okay let me g take you guys through the answers to the tasks so what's the normal parent process of services it is written here when initialize what's the name of the network utility tool introduced in this task tcp view and here what's the partial cmt let for reviewing windows event logs get when event provide the command line used to query to to enter os query that's the answer what does edr mean endpoint detection and response and lastly the flag so that was it guys of course endpoint detection and response is a vast subject we're going to expand on the subject later in the upcoming videos for now thank you for watching